Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be continuing with our shop menu system. And this time around, we're going to be adding prices to our items. So let's go ahead and take a look. So now inside of my menu, each item has a price to it. And when I click on that item to buy it, it subtracts it from my currency up on the top here. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Okay, so first let's go ahead and update the text on the text button if you haven't done that already. To do that, go ahead and just click on your button. And then right here, you'll just put buy and then whatever price you want to do. After that, we're going to go up to the replicated storage. And then for each of our tools, what we're going to be doing is adding an int value inside of the tool. So to do that, you can just click on your tool, click on the plus sign, and then search for int value. After that, you're going to open up your int value. And then down here for the value section, this is going to be whatever price you want for your tool. So for example, for the cylinder, I'm charging 100. And then if we look under the next one, this corresponds to the brick. I'm charging 500. So for value, I put 500. And then for the last one, I'm putting 1000. Make sure you rename the end values to price because we're going to be using that later on in the script. So next, we're going to be taking a look at the script that we wrote under server script service. And what we had from last time was a simple function that whenever the user clicked on a button, it gave them that particular tool. So what we're going to do first is set up a currency system, which is going to be stored in the leader stats. To do that, we're going to start on a function up here. So we'll say local function. And for this function, we'll just call it on player join. And then we're going to pass player. Inside the function, we're going to start by making a folder. So we'll say local leader stats is going to be equal to instance.new and then we're going to be creating a folder after that we're going to say leader stats dot name is equal to leader stats then we're going to say leader stats dot parent is going to be equal to player Next is where we're going to be defining our currency. I'm going to be using gold, but you can go ahead and use whatever you want to. So I'm going to say local gold is equal to instance dot new. And this is going to be a new int value. After that, I'm going to say gold dot name is equal to gold. Next, I'm going to say gold dot value. And this is where you can set the initial amount of gold that we give to players. And since we're just testing, I'm going to give my player 5,000 so that he can buy items. After that, we're going to say gold.parent is equal to leader stats. And finally, we want to run this function whenever a player joins the game. So we're going to say added colon connect. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to put the name of the function. All right, so before we move on, let's just go ahead and run the game and check it out. And we can see up in the top right hand corner, we have a leader stats with the gold value. So now back to the script, we're going to be taking a look at this function right here. And what we did before is whenever the player clicks a button, regardless if they have any money or not, we just gave them the tool. So what we need to do first is check to make sure they have enough money to buy the tool. So the way we're going to do that, we're going to say if player dot leader stats dot gold dot value. So this is accessing how much gold they have. And we're going to be checking to see if that's greater than tool.price.value. So this price right here is the int value that we stored inside the different tools. And by saying dot value, we're taking a look at this number right here. OK, so if the player's gold value is greater than the price of the tool, then what we're going to do is we're going to give them that tool. In addition to giving the player the tool, we also need to subtract the price of the tool from the player's gold value. And we can do that by taking the player's gold value and setting it equal to the gold value minus the price of the tool. Let's go and take a look at this and make sure it's working. Okay, so now when I buy the tool, I'm checking to make sure it subtracts the price from the gold up here. So I see that it subtracted 100 for the first tool. It subtracted 500 for the second tool. And it subtracts 1,000 for the last tool. 
if I try to buy this tool for 1,000 and I only have 400 gold and I try clicking on the button, then it doesn't give me the tool. And if you want to, you can add these two lines right here so that even if the player dies, they still keep the tools that they bought. Alright, so this is going to be the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.